Welcome to Jubilee Way Placegate. My name's Adam White, I'm one of the directors of Davis White Landscape Architects. We designed and delivered this project back in 2008, a year after we did our Playscape show garden at Hampton Court Palace. And I'm just going to take you on a little bit of a... Let me just lock this, there we go. Just take you through and I'll show you what it's like really. There's some lessons to be learned if you design in nature play spaces. This is a classic one where you can see that the wording is coming out off the boulder. What you want to do is have it engraved into the boulders, which is what we do now. It stops it being chipped away. It's like, guess the name of the project. Grassy Mound still holding up. That's all about having the right type of angle. You can see it's a gentle slope. Too steep and the grass won't take and grow. Boulders, don't be getting little pebbles. Get decent sized boulders that you can climb, sit, crawl up and over. Bins were put in by the council. Um, essential really in a lot of public spaces, but don't go for little tweed plastic ones. This boulder wall is still here. No gaps to get your foot and arm trapped in. If there were, they were infilled with concrete. This self-binding footpath still holding up. Now this bridge here is made from the timbers from the Cutty Sark Dry Dock in London. Amazing. It's got a bit of a graffiti underneath, we'll show you that in a wee while. But you can see it's still doing the job. It still allows you to look down over the skate bowl. Oh, sorry, that was my finger. Bike racks are still in. Looks like one might have gone. Let's walk back this way. Amazing to think how old this project is now and it's still holding up. The infrastructure of it is still here. It's not supposed to be an RHS gold garden. It's an adventure play space. You can see it's packed full of risk and adventure. There's the pod swing, boulder wall which wraps around. Using sand and loose filling spaces is fantastic, but there is a maintenance implication. And the way to really get away from having to constantly fill it up is design the edges to contain the sand in. You can see that edge does here. There's a raised edge around here, which does. So it stops the sand and bark or whatever loose fill you're using migrating across the site. I see that time and time again, people using sand and whoever's running the project, they're constantly topping it up. So this boulder we had engraved into and you can see it's perfectly fine. There's a message there from good old Cape Space and our friend Sarah Gaventa. Then one from Rosper about risk in play, still as essential and as important as to was when it was done, what, eight years ago. And a message off myself there around describing what Playscape was. You have to remember when this project was first opened, we were still putting KFCs in. Everybody was doing that. Kit, fence, carpet, the springy chicken syndrome. This was really changing the way play spaces were starting to be designed across the UK. No fencing around it, you can see it just reaches out into the open space next to it. Which is exactly how play should be. There should be no sort of fence contained area when now start playing. It should always be about adventure. Let's walk around here. This is a zip wire, it's one of the shorter ones. And I'll be honest, you know, it could do with being a bit longer. Now we're putting in double zip wires, which introduces competitive play. Some of the plantings hung in there over the last decade. But you know, we are in January, so you're hardly going to get a blooming marvellous floral display. But I just want you to show, just so what, a project that's almost 10 years old and takes in considerable hammer looks like you can see the grass has retained on the side of the slope here and that's all about getting the right angle oh the times i see these little pimples boils of of grass in play spaces they don't establish now we're going into the skate pit area the bowl yes there's graffiti in it it's all about ownership none of it's abusive well consider naked abusive but it's incredibly popular I mean I'm here on a Thursday morning 
at half past ten so you know it's not going to be busy but it just gives you an idea of what it looks like and with this link to this little film I'll show you some pictures of the opening and you can see the contrast in the two here we go we'll walk around oh the memories are flooding back we did some hard graft on this project like I say it would never been done before so it was a real challenge you know just putting a tunnel in the skeptics would be saying oh you're gonna get foxes sleeping in it you're gonna get homeless people in it you're gonna get people shooting up doing drugs there'll be sex taking place in it I said it's only four meters long it's a comedy story for you. Now that's the uh, shelter. We designed that with the skaters down here. It's based on a kind of surfboard idea. You can see this is what I mentioned earlier about the graffiti that's taken place or tagging or whatever you want to call it. Do you know what? It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. It's quite in keeping. If you go to the South Bank, the old school skate park there, that's exactly how it was. It's about ownership. These are the guys that use this place day in, day out. There's the old project logos, all the people that supported it. Bless them. And here are our signs telling people the do's and don'ts which we were asked to put up. Still there, covered in graffiti but still there. Now this little beauty, one of the contractors working on it was a smashing chap called Vaz. And blimey, he knew how to create landform. He's brilliant. And when he put this tree in this pine here, I said, Vaz, it's not straight, mate. It's at this funny angle. He told me it's the leaning tree of Vaz. And it's still here. He'd be proud to know it's still here. Let's just look over here. Like I can say, it's taken a fair bit of hammer. And we're in January, so there's a planting's all been cut back. And this is the grind box that went in. Still there, still very popular. You can see it's been used. So there we go, let's wander up this path again and just go across here to give you an insight before we say goodbye. I'm gonna try and climb up. Here we go. Ugh. So like I say, it's not supposed to be a fancy RHS show garden. It's a rugged, playful landscape. The essential advice to give anyone wanting to do one of these sort of projects is get the infrastructure right. Don't worry about the kit and the furniture that goes in. Get the landscape infrastructure right. And then you can always replace that over the years. But if you contain the loose fill, you create levels and changes. That's the way to do it. And I'll tell you how popular this project's been. It led to Kingston and Transport for London putting in a bus stop. That didn't used to be here. That's a new bus stop that went in because it was so popular. So, from Kingston's Jubilee Well Playscape in 2016, this is Adam White. You can find on Twitter at Davis underscore White. You can see our projects at davis.white.co.uk. But for now, as the K2 hook bus goes past, I'll catch up with you all very soon. Cheers. Bye bye.